Now let's have a brief look on question number nine. This is a question for the cross rates as well, and you are going to learn about what are the cover rates. Let's first go, I think, to the concept sheet that will give us a good idea. Uh, yeah, this one. So what exactly we have covered till now? That's very much important, sir. The very first question was on the strategies for exposure management. You remember the four strategies return on foreign currency investment and uh, in home currency as well. Expected spot rate 1.31, 1.30. Cross rates Japanese yen, Australian dollar, US dollar. Time value of money and currency value of fluctuation. You remember that difference of 2,10,000 rupees, right? This was about 1.30 and 1.31. This was about 14.21. Or uh, better to say, you rem you learn about this formula. One plus return in home currency is equal to one plus return in foreign currency in bracket one plus minus change in exchange rate, right? And there are four strategies in this uh, cross rate. You learned about Australian dollar, Japanese yen and US dollar uh, and speculation with forward contract. If you remember, you took a buy position today, expecting that the forward rate will be will increase. And then later on, it actually decreased to 1.26, resulting it into loss. Net exposure of foreign currency. You remember the Japanese yen had a better position or means was having an offsetting position then we discussed about this question number eight which was return for foreign currency and the in domestic investor as well where snp index we were investing in the snp index 1.5 bit crore so these are a few things if you want to just revise some time and if you can remember uh, by looking at these figures you can easily remember the question now we are going to discuss the next three questions based on the cover rate and I think I should be taking question number 11 instead of 9 and 10 because all the three questions are based on the same concept only the figures are different so let's have a look on question number 11. See 9 I will just explain the 9 and 10th one later on let's first discuss on the question number 11. 9 and 10 will be your homework. You a foreign exchange dealer of your bank. Now understand who you are actually. You are a foreign exchange dealer of the bank. Are informed that your bank has sold a T. T. What is TT? It's telegraphic transfer. A mode of online transfer for fund. Telegraphic transfer. This is just a mode of online transfer in Copenhagen for Danish kroner. Copenhagen is the city's name like Mumbai, New York, London, Copenhagen for Danish kroner. Danish kroner is the currency DKK. 10 lakh at a rate of Danish kroner 1 is equal to 6.5150. So your bank has sold it, sold the this much of the Danish kroner at this rate. So the sell position is already open. You are required to cover the transaction. What do you mean by cover? Exactly closing the transaction or doing the opposite of what you have done. So if you have a buy position and if you want to cover, you will take a sell position. If you have a sell position and you want to cover, you will take a buy position. So this is our case where we already have opened a sell position and we have to cover it. Cover it means now we have to buy it. Do you understand that? What are we going to buy? The same thing that we sold. What exactly we sold here? 
यू कैन क्लियरली सी वी सोल्ड द डी के के डैनिश क्रोनर सो वी वुड वॉन्ट टू बाय द डैनिश क्रोनर अगेंस्ट विच करेंसी अगेंस्ट द सेम करेंसी एज वी सोल्ड दैट वॉज आई एन आर सो इन दिस केस ऑल्सो वी नीड अ बाइंग वी नीड टू बाय द डी के के अगेंस्ट आई एन आर दैट्स द सिंपलेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द कवर रेट कवर रेट मीन्स क्लोजिंग द सेम ट्रांजेक्शन दैट यू हैव ओपन इन द सेम करेंसी DKK and INR in this case, but there are two options to cover the transaction. We can buy. We want to buy DKK, right? Because you have already sold ten lakhs of the DKK from your uh, uh, bank. You have to buy it back. But you can buy those either from the London market or the New York market. This is the third currency. along with dkk and inr available to you so along with dkk and inr you will have to decide whether you will be going through gbp or usd so if you go through london london comes in england great britain and the currency of that is gbp new york comes under america and the currency of that is us dollar this is what you have to remember the rates on that date are as under now you can see the first two first rate and uh, the third rate are based on london and second rate and the fourth one is based on new york rest dkk and inr are covered under both so mumbai to london and then london to copenhagen ultimately london london will get cancelled and mumbai and copenhagen will be there so mumbai means inr copenhagen means dkk in the other part mumbai new york and new york copenhagen so new york new york will have to be cancelled and what what will be left is the mumbai and copenhagen that is inr and dkk now you can clearly see that in in the in front of the values rupees is the sign that means the other currency is base currency because this is always the price currency na so other currency is base currency what is the base currency in this first quote base currency is gbp in this case and in the second case it is us dollar in the third case please explain what is the base currency dkk is the price currency since it is given in front of the values so the rest other currency which is gbp london is for gbp copenhagen is for dkk new york copenhagen you can clearly see that dkk is the price that means us dollar is the base currency so these are the base currencies okay if you want to write down all these rates in terms of iso code you can do that uh, we can write it in iso code also we can do that in symbol let me see what the answer has taken so answer does not have so specific uh, currency so let's go ahead with the iso code for the first time how to write the iso code it should be read like this right to left so base currency will be written first it will be gbp inr 74.3 74.32 right this is going to be uh, usd inr this is going to be gbp dkk this is going to be usd dkk so this is the base currency this is the price currency okay in which market will you cover the transaction obviously in whichever market it will cost lowest to buy dkk because we want to buy dkk we will make sure we are paying less amount of inr le less amount of inr uh, whichever market is going to give us cheaper rate for dkk we are going to prefer that london or new york and what will be the exchange profit or loss on this transaction obviously first let's buy let's finalize the buying rate and then we will see what is the difference in that buying rate and the selling rate so that we can find out the profit or loss question number 11 so the original transaction that you have made is sell dkk inr and the rate was 6.5150 right so in order to cover it up you will have to buy 
डी के के आई एन आर राइट एंड यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट दिस रेट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस टू विल बी प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस ऑन सिंगल डी के के इन टोटल यू हैव सोल्ड टेन लैक्स डी के के सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी योर नेट प्रॉफिट और लॉस राइट नाउ सिंस यू आर प्लानिंग टू बाय बैंक विल सेल डी के के अगेंस्ट आई एन आर देर फोर वी नीड आस्क रेट एग्जैक्टली सो वी नीड आस्क रेट ऑफ आई एन आर पर डी के के और इफ यू वॉन्ट टू राइट इट इन आई एस ओ टर्म्स इट इज गोइंग टू बी आस्क ऑफ डी के के आई एन आर वेर द फर्स्ट करेंसी is base and the second one is price how to form an equation in this case i have already explained you when uh, we had symbols but how to form an equation in this case because dkk and inr rate is not directly given to you you have to use the cross rates in this question okay so let's frame an equation it's very simple sir dkk is first it has to be first so we need ask of which currency so we have to first choose the market let's say we go with the london market now so london market means the other currency will be gbp so we need dkk gbp it means gbp per unit of dkk gbp per unit of dkk multiplied by again now inr should be the second in the equation inr should be second that means it's a price currency so we will write ask of gbp inr you can clearly see that if dkk in terms of iso code if dkk is written first we have to write it first itself and inr is written second we have we should write it second so gbp will be last here uh, gbp is the price currency in this case and base currency in this case first one is the base currency second one is the price currency simple so keep it like that only the other currency which is called as common currency should be base currency in one quote and the price currency in the other quote this is what you have to remember now let's focus on the rates given to you in the question first of all the very first thing is whether it is dkk gbp you can clearly see that it is not a dkk gbp it's a gbp dkk what does that mean it means that gbp is the base currency in the quote given in the question but we need dkk as the base currency what are we going to do we are going to reverse the quote so once we reverse the quote we can easily convert it to gbp dkk right but please make sure that ask will also be converted into bid this is what you have to remember second thing ah you need gbp inr do you think gbp inr is given to you yes the first quote is the gbp inr itself so pick the ask rate of that 74.32 directly now do you think gbp dkk is given yes sir obviously that's why we have converted yes this is gbp dkk so you need bid or ask of that you need bid rate of that so we will be using understand we will be using this rate and this rate because we had to convert this dkk is 11.42 so it will look like 74.32 divided by 11.42 do you understand this so your final rate for one dkk in terms of inr is 6.5079 okay that is in london market repeat the same process in new york market and find out whether you are getting a lesser rate in the new york market let's go to the new york market same thing will be repeated in the new york market see what i am doing i'm just duplicating everything from here okay and we'll remove few things first of all in place of gbp we are going to write down usd because now we are in new york and uh, then in place of gbp we are going to write down usd because it is the same case 
अंडरस्टैंड वी नीड डी के के यू एस डी दैट मीन्स डी के के शुड बी द बेस करेंसी वी हैव यू एस डी डी के के इन दिस केस यू एस डी इज द बेस करेंसी सो वी हैव टू चेंज आर इक्वेशन अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्वेश्चन सो वॉट वी डिड इन दिस केस इज वेन डी के के यू एस डी वॉज गिवन वी हैव कन्वर्टेड इट टू यू एस डी डी के के सो वी आर गोइंग टू डू द रिवर्स ऑफ इट एंड आस्क विल बिकम द बिड ऑफ इट अगेन द सेम थिंग हैव लुक सो वॉट आर द टू रेट्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक फॉर न्यू यॉर्क सर फोर्टी नाइन एंड दिस वन दैट्स इट सिमिलर वे फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट टू सिक्स टू फाइव एंड सेवन पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स सेवन जीरो Am I right? Chal, let's calculate. So that's six point five one zero two. Now you decide which rate is better for you. Six point five zero seven nine or six point five one zero two. See, you can only decide it when you when you know ex what are you going to do. Are you buying DKK or selling DKK? You want to buy DKK. Bank will sell it, and that's why we have taken our credit. So you want to buy it from which market? You would prefer to buy obviously London because it is costing you less rupees to buy single DKK. Here it is, it is costing you more rupees. So six point five zero seven nine will become your final. answer for the first part that which market will you be using to buy dkk i will use london market as it is costing me lower then comes the profit 6.5079 right let's come to this point we will write 6.5079 so what is the profit now since we have all we had already sold the dkk at 6.5150 and we are buying it back at 6.5079 so the profit per dkk is 0.0071 when multiplied with 10 lakh will give you 7100 rupees that's my final answer let's find out what the institute has to say 7100 this is 7119 that's it but institute has taken Uh, a long approach of solving the question which is going to take a lot of time to solve it institute has calculated the profit in both the cases that should not have been done see ev at every point they are multiplying and calculating it in values instead of keeping the question simple to the rates and then finally only one rate at the end they are just multiplying using 10 lakh dkk at every point in this case also they are doing it like this and you can see the profit is less in new york and that's why the transaction would be covered through london which is giving the maximum profit but i would suggest you to follow this approach marks will not get affected don't worry about it and this is a better approach after writing these two statements you can uh, these two equations you can just write down that we are going to select london for covering the dkk and then you are, you are going to present it in this manner so that you can come to the point this is the simplest way to understand instead of following this and this is going to take time don't you think that doing the calculation at each point 1 lakh 32000 152.77 65 lakh 10000 65 lakh 15000 is going to take time and there are more chances of making mistake in such type of calculation instead of this this is the simplest way so try to make things simple as possible as much as possible so this is for this is the question for covering the transaction you understood how to cover the transaction the cover rate in this case is 6.5079 the cover rate is the cover rate means to close the open position it doesn't mean buying always or it doesn't mean selling it means closing the position so if you have a buy position the cover rate will be for sell position if you have a sell position already then the cover rate will be for buy position that is what you have to do in the previous two question and the previous two questions are easier than the one we have seen in the question that we have just discussed there were two different markets in this case there are not no such things 
there is only single market you have to calculate the cross rate you can find out the final answer that's it again single rate to calculate cross rate and then find out the answer profit or loss that's it so question number 11 and we can say till the cover rate part is closed now we are going to discuss about the swap points and this is going to be an interesting part so let's have a look you have following quotes from bank a and bank b okay you can clearly see that the quotes are in iso format okay how are you going to read it this is the very first question and very important you are going to read it like this you are going to read it like this so which one is the base currency and which one is the price currency usd gbp gbp usd the first currency <coughs> too much of clutter this is going to be the base currency or you can see the product under this quote is the first one gbp usd and the second currency that that is given to you is called as the price currency okay the spot rate from bank a for usd chf is given to you 1.4650 and 55 please understand how to read this this 55 doesn't mean the only 55 like 55 chf will be there for usd no it's the way of presentation whenever it's written that means these two are the last digits so 1.4650 and 1.4655 is the rate bid and ask in this case also 53 and 60 40 and 50 45 and 60 these are the last two digits in a quotation okay after that 3 months and swap 6 months swap points are given to you sir how to understand whether these are the swap points it's very simple sir when the rate is 1.46 do you think the 3 months forward rate will be 5 chf per dollar no this is clearly up swap points these are clearly the points okay you can see that whenever it comes to a swap point that means if you have to calculate the 3 months forward rate you will have to add or deduct these swap points in the spot rate for calculating the 3 months spot rate or uh, 3 months forward rate 6 months forward rate 3 months forward rate 6 months forward rate understand that there are no forward rates quoted by the bank b only forward rate quoted is by the bank a first second these are in ascending order these are also in ascending order but these two are descending order so if you have to calculate the forward rate for usd chf you are going to add these swap points and if you have to calculate the forward rate for this gbp usd you are going to deduct it why because the swap points are in descending order this represent that the bank is expecting gbp usd rates to fall in forward market and that's why do the needful make sure it falls okay how much minimum chf amount you have to pay for 1 million gbp spot what does that mean how much you have to pay chf to buy gbp so you want to buy gbp <clears throat> you can take any currency as a base currency in this you want to sell chf and buy gbp so first of all you decide what should be the base currency that you want and then you will decide accordingly i am deciding for the gbp that i want to buy gbp see for 1 million gbp at spot rate at spot rate i want to buy gbp by paying chf okay so my quotation should look like this gbp chf right because gbp I chose GBP as the base currency and I want to buy it. I want to buy it means bank will sell it. If the bank is going to sell it the rates will be ask of just a second. The rates will look like ask of GBP CHF. Simple. I will I want ask of GBP CHF. ask of gbp chf is not directly given to you you will have to use the cross rates 
ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू विल हैव टू फ्रेम द इक्वेशन लेट्स डू दैट हियर सो हाउ टू राइट इट आस्क ऑफ जी बी पी सी एच एफ इज इक्वल टू आस्क ऑफ जी बी पी शुड बी फर्स्ट जी बी पी वॉट इज द अदर करेंसी यू एस डॉलर एंड देन यू एस डी शुड बी फर्स्ट ईयर सो दैट वी कैन कैंसल इट आस्क ऑफ यू एस डी एंड देन द सेकेंड करेंसी सी एच एफ सो द प्लेसमेंट इज एक्जैक्टली सेम एज वी नीड नाउ डू यू थिंक द कोटेशन गिवन टू यू इन द स्पॉट मार्केट इज जी बी पी यू एस डी सी यस सर इट इज इन जी बी पी यू एस डी एंड यू वॉन्ट टू टेक आस्क ऑफ दैट सो आस्क ऑफ दैट इज वन पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स सिक्स जीरो एम आई राइट बट यू विल बी मेकिंग अ मिस्टेक बाई टेकिंग वन पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स सेवन जीरो बिकॉज जी बी पी यू एस डी कोर्ट्स आर नॉट गिवन जस्ट बाय वन बैंक इट इज गिवन बाय बोथ द बैंक्स इन स्पॉट मार्केट so if you want to buy see understand you are you want to buy gbp you would always want a lower rate a smaller rate or a cheaper rate to buy gbp and in this case bank b is offering you uh, the lower rate in bank a it is 1.7660 the ask rate and 1.7650 in the bank b so which rate will be preferred by you bank b you will buy the pounds in dollar from bank b so 1.7650 this is where the trick is that is why the bank b's quotations are also given when the two quotes are given you need to be very careful and ask yourself why you are just picking the rates from bank a why not bank b obviously we can do that if it is lower okay then the second rate which is required to us is usd chf do you think usd chf is written yes sir it is written exactly in a manner that we need usd chf and we need the ask of that 1.4655 1.4660 which one should be taken this one because this is lower 1.4655 that's it you have the answer very simple 2.5866 multiplied by how many pounds 1 million that is 10000000 do you get that see if you would have gone for sell chf and you would have kept chf as the base currency in your quotation then sell chf is the thing that you want bank would have bought it that means banks buying rate for the base currency and at that time you would have taken bid rate and in bid rate you need to make sure that you are selling highest rate will be preferred highest rate will be preferred in that case if you are taking a bid rate if you are taking a ask rate from the bank lowest rate should be preferred because bank is selling na we are to buying so the ask rate should be lower and the bid rate should be highest as possible these rates because this is banks buying rate okay and our selling rate we would want to sell it at the maximum possible you can clearly see that the bid rate in this quote from bank b is higher 1.7645 and 1.7640 so if i want to sell gbp in this case gbp is the base currency i would go for this rate 1.7645 from bank a and uh, this rate in bank b because it is higher 1. Four six five three instead of five zero. Okay, what is the second quotation? Second uh, quote uh, question. Considering the quotes from Bank A only, so it has made very clear that forget about the Bank B. Only for GBP CHF. That's what we wrote, right? Acha. What are the implied swap points for spot over three months? First of all, GBP CHF is not directly given to you. and now they are asking what is the spot rate of gbp chf also the forward rate of gbp chf and the difference between spot and forward will be the swap point in gbp chf so do you understood what we, what exactly we have to do first we have to calculate the spot and forward rates from bank a only for gbp and chf so this is going to take a little calculation part 
let me just close it and open it again yeah pretty fast now <laughs> So first of all let's go for the spot rate. They want us to calculate GBP CHF right and bid and ask both. So first we will go with bid of GBP CHF. Let's frame the equation. In case of bid we want bid of GBP. What is the other currency? USD. And then again bid of USD CHF. The requirement should be framed in a proper manner. The GBP is in the first place gbp should be first in this equation as well chf should be second okay now let's write down the answer first of all find out whether the quotes are given in this manner itself and bank a only gbp usd usd chf you can clearly see that gbp usd usd chf exactly in a manner what that we need and then pick the bid of this 1.4650 1.7645 so 1.7645 multiplied by 1.4650 this is your answer Two point five eight five zero. now the same will be repeated for ask of gbp chf <coughs> this is easy the forward part will be little difficult ask means 1.4655 and 1.7660 that's 2.5881 so you have reached at the spot rates of gbp chf which is nothing but 2.5850 and 2.5881 now you have to calculate the forward but for that purpose first you have to calculate the forward of gbp usd and forward of usd chf as well first and then you will have to put it in this equation see and the question is very clear for over three months that means you have to focus on the three months rates only this and this and before calculating this understand that usd chf swap points are appreciating or in ascending order that means you are going to add it and in this case you are going to deduct it because the swap points are declining so first of all let's write down usd chf spot rate three months swap points and i can calculate three month forward rate in the similar manner i am going to do it for gbp usd and then i am going to use those forward rates for this purpose so what are the spot rates 465055 understand how to use that the points are 5 and 10 see when the points are 5 and 10 that means you have to use it from the last to the first 5 point double zero one zero so this is how you have to keep those 5 and 10 points from the last decimal last number so 5 will be at the last point and if it is 10 it will be on the last two digits uh, and if it is 100 or let's say 250 then it will be on the last three digits and we are going to add it because the points are increasing so it will be 1.4655 and 1.4665 let's write out write down for gbp usd 1.7645 and 60 and the swap points for these for the three months are 25 and 20 the important factor to know here is we are going to deduct it instead of adding it why because the points are in declining format so 
सो यू हैव रीच्ड एट द टू रेट्स थ्री मंथ फॉरवर्ड फॉर यू एस डी सी एच एफ थ्री मंथ फॉरवर्ड फॉर जी बी पी यू एस डी नाउ वी विल डू द कैलकुलेशन फॉर फॉरवर्ड सेम थिंग सेम थिंग विल बी रिपीटेड सर जस्ट द वैल्यूज विल चेंज नाउ so from the forward we have to consider gbpchf right so bid of gbp usd so this is gbp usd you can clearly see here this and the bid is 1.7620 1.7620 1. 1.4655 One point four six five five four USD CHF. So this is bid of USD CHF. Bid of USD CHF one point four six five five. Okay. The second part in the similar manner. Okay, let's solve this first. Two point five eight two two. The second one. One point seven six four zero into one point. Four six six five. Am I right? If you want to just do the markings, it is like this. Two point five eight six nine. Okay, so these are the two rates for you. You can put it here. Two point five eight, two two, and two point five eight, six nine. So this is the spot rate for GBP CHF now, and this is the forward rate for GBP CHF. Now you can easily calculate the swap points, spot rate, forward rate. and the swap points five eight five zero five eight eight one five eight two two five eight six nine see you can clearly see that the rates are declining and the difference between these two are 28 points and 12 points yeah so this is declining the market is declining 28 and 12 are the swap points swap points are in declining form the rates will be this swap points has to be deducted from the spot rate in order to arrive at the forward rate 28 and 12 that's how we have to do the calculation the 3 month swap points are at discount of 28 and 12 that's it do you understand how we reached that first we calculated this spot rate and then we calculated this forward rate in order to calculate the forward rates we had to do all this mess first we had to calculate the spot rates or uh, forward rates of the usd chf and gbp usd as well so that we can use the cross rate of that for the forward rate the cross rate should be used from the forward rate size itself right so this is the matter This question was pretty easy, but lengthy in the calculation part only. Have a look on question number thirteen. Uh, yeah, the uh, pretty easy one, not that difficult. Okay, you a forex dealer had entered into a cross currency deal. Understand? What do you mean by cross currency? When? none of the two currencies in the deal is home currency 
what does that mean let's see the deal you had uh, your forex dealer had sold 10 lakh dollars against euro so the, the, there are two currencies in that dollar and euro and none of them is your home currency only three currencies dollar euro and inr are there in the question this is not your home currency this is not your home currency then are you from india yes sir inr is your home currency cross currency means none of the currencies in the deal is your home currency so if the dollar is not the home currency euro is not the home currency the india will be home currency and you have taken a sell position in dollars in terms of euro okay so you sold 10 lakh dollar and received 14 lakh 40 thousand euro at a rate of 1.44 however later during the day the market became volatile and the dealer in compliance with his management's guideline had to square up that means cover up so this is called as cover up position so you have to take the cover rate what will be the gain or loss in the transaction first of all you already have the selling rate you will you will have to find out a cover rate for that that means buying rate you want to buy bank will sell the other bank in the market so if one bank wants to buy it from the other bank still the ask rate will be applicable the quotations will be looked from the other bank's angle i am giving you an example i am the bank i want to buy the forex foreign currency from the other bank so i will look at the quotations from the other bank's angle i am so customer for the other bank na so i will be a customer so spot rate for inr per dollar and euro per dollar are given to you what exactly you need you tell me very simple sir this is question number 13 so we have a sell position in dollar so can i write it like usd eur 1.44 so you euro per dollar is 1.44 so we want to create a buy position in usd eur that's we want don't know yet so basically we wants to buy we want to buy dollar dollar is the base currency in this question so we want to buy dollar bank will sell dollar we need ask rate of usd eur let's frame the equation ask of usd should be kept first as against the inr am i right and euro should be kept last as against the inr we need such type of rate and if you go through the given data you would you will find that you need usd inr and this quotation is exactly usd inr format where dollar is the base currency and in the second one also the dollar is the base currency and euro hmm the good part in this question is that the direct rate for euro and dollar is given so we don't have to calculate this cross currency rate you don't have to do all this thing just go for usd euro buy rate you want to buy it that means bank will sell it the ask rate will be applicable see this is usd euro rate right and the ask rate is 1.4350 1.4350 you will buy bank will sell you will buy dollar at this much euro and sell dollar at this much euro you will be still ending up in the profit 1.44 is the selling price 1.4350 is the buying price so 4350 is the buying price 5000 euros are your 5000 euros are your profit but now since you are from india the profit or loss should be represented in rupees so what will you do with these euros you will sell it in the market again when you will sell the euros you can sell it in this market itself selling the euros means bank will buy euro but the price uh, but the uh, base currency is dollar here always put the requirement in terms of base currency you want to sell this euro that means you want to buy dollars buying dollar means bank will sell it at 1.4 350 so the moment you can divide 5000 divided by 1350 you will get the dollars from the bank it's easy first 
this much is your profit right first sell the euro in this market and get the dollar and then sell the dollar in this market and get the inr you will get the profit or you can calculate the cross rate as well let's go with the cross rate as against inr we want to sell see it's very simple we want to sell euro bank will buy euro so bank's buying rate for euro is what we want euro inr am i right in this case since i want to sell euros i have the profit of euro i want to sell euros bank will buy it so bid of euro should be kept first euro inr and uh, bid of inr usd am i right euro usd sorry euro usd so usd and usd inr it is like this see INR is at the second place. INR is at the second place. Euro is at the first place. Euro is at the first place, and the common currency is at the different places, right, sir? So this is your equation. Now, Euro USD is not given to you. Euro is not the base currency as against the USD, right? USD is the base currency, so you will have to inverse it. One. So what are you going to do? One divided by bid will become ask USD Euro. into usd inr is given to you yes sir so pick a bid rate of it 61.43 61.43 so 61.43 divided by ask of this usd euro usd euro ask is 1.4350 so this will be your rate to sell those 5000 inr a uh, euro 61.43 divided by 1.4350 so that's 42.808804 in total euros that you want to sell is 5000 am i right so total profit will be Two lakh fourteen thousand zero forty-two. Simple. Oh, this is how you can go. Otherwise, also see understand. I will tell you. Those are the two rates itself, which will come to the point. You want to sell euro. Euro is given against dollar. Dollar is the base currency. You want to sell euro means buy dollar. Bank will sell dollar. The rate applicable is. 1.4350 so divide 5000 with 1.4350 you will get the dollar now you want to sell dollar bank will buy dollar dollar is the base currency the buying rate is 61.43 so 5000 divided by this much multiplied by 61.43 you will get the answer see 61.43 and this this is the cross rate or in other manner you can go it go like this first sell 5000 euros at this rate and get the dollar and then sell all the dollars at this rate and get the rupees 2,14,042 so 2,14,042 is the total profit let's move on to the next question that's question number 14 yeah very much similar to question number 13 let's do it and finish it or you can keep it for homework it's the same thing again there will be some loss in that see in this case there is a loss of 5000 euros and again you will have to sell the 5000 euros in the market and there will be a loss loss in the transaction it's exactly same as the previous question instead of profit it is uh, it is the loss in this and there is no use of margin so don't worry uh, the forward margin and don't worry about it both the questions are clearly same Question number fifteen. On January twenty eight two thousand thirteen, an importer customer requested a bank to remit Singapore dollar two lakh. Ah, uh, sorry, two point five million, or we can say twenty five lakh, under an irrevocable letter of credit. However, 
due to unavoidable factors the bank could affect the remittance only on february 4 2013 that means 4 days after the request was made by the importer now first of all this is an importer he might have purchased some machineries or assets or services and for that purpose he has to make the payment in singapore dollar to some party in singapore okay so the total amount of payment is 25 lakh singapore dollar he went to the bank he asked the bank to make the payment and for that purpose he had this letter of credit so bank had issued letter of credit to him that means without making the payment he can ask the bank to make the payment to the other party so practically speaking the bank is giving him a loan bank is making the payment on his behalf so that he can pay later on along with the interest to the bank that's all okay we don't have to do anything right now but the payment has to be made in the singapore dollar not in terms of rupees and the importer is going to ret- return the money to the bank since both of them are in the same country in rupees so exchange rate will be applicable now the entire story comes to this point is that bank did not remit the singapore dollar on the same day the importer requested but bank could do it only after 4 days and because of that the exchange rate changed from 28th january to 4th of the february what you have to do in this entire calculation is find out the loss to the importer or the profit to the importer because of this delay of 4 days so what if bank would have remitted it on january 28 2013 calculate the total cash outflow first of all you will calculate the singapore dollar to inr rate and then you will multiply it with 25 lakhs so that is the total outflow that would have been possible if the bank would have remitted the entire amount on january 28 but the bank did not do it bank did it in on uh, did it on 4th of the february so calculate the rate again for the 4th february exchange rates and then find out what is the total outflow the total outflow of 4th january minus the total outflow of january 28 will be the net profit or loss to you that's what you have to calculate but more than that you have to l- understand what is the interbank rate and what is the margin and merchant rate in this question have a look however due to unavoidable factors the bank could affect the remittances only on 4th of february 2013 and the interbank market rates are given to you as follows so what do you mean by interbank rate interbank rate means mark bank to bank rates so those are not applicable these rates are not applicable directly to the importer we have to adjust the bank's profit in that so please understand it from this point bank 1 bank 2 and client so there will be two different rates for rupees and dollar <coughs> let's say if the rates of rupees per dollar are 50 and 52 so 50 will be the bid rate and if these two rates if these rates are applicable for the transaction between these two banks these rates are called as interbank rate right cool so let's for example understand that bank 2 wants to buy dollar whenever the interbank rates are given these rates has to be interpreted from the other bank's angle so if this bank wants to buy dollar the first bank will sell dollar so the dollar flow will be like this right can i can i say this is my buying rate and this bank's selling rate so bank 2 is paying 52 to buy the dollar and bank 1 is selling the dollar at 52 rupees okay so can i say one more thing <laughs> sell dollar buy dollar and can i say uh in terms of rupees rupees 
this is coming in and this is going out see i'm buying the dollar and paying the rupees so this is an outflow for bank 2 and this is an inflow for bank 1 for rupees but the dollar is going out and dollar is coming in on the contrary bank 2 wants to sell the dollar if the bank 2 wants to sell the dollar bank 1 will buy it at a bid rate since bank 1 is buying the dollar 50 will be his outflow its outflow and since bank 2 is selling the dollar 50 will be his inflow understand the point now of doing all this after buying or selling the dollar from bank one this bank two is going to adjust the margin and then sell it to you the margin will always be a profit to the bank which has to be an inflow always to the bank two so we are going to adjust margin and the margin can be in terms of percentage can be in terms of direct rupees Let's take for example that it is in the direct rupees, 2 rupees of the margin bank wants to keep with, with them. So what will happen? <coughs> 50, uh, 2 rupees is the margin. So and the bank's margin is always the bank's inflow. Margin in any case, whether it is buying or selling, margin is always the bank's inflow, both the margins, bank 2's inflow. So look from this bank 2's angle when the client will come to the bank 2 this is the you are the importer in this question and you are going to look from this party's angle the rates from this bank's angle and you can clearly see that this rate 50 plus 2 this is the inflow to the bank this is also the inflow to the bank and now the rate that it will apply to you is So what will happen now is uh, the rates quoted between the two banks for the two banks we can see will be called as interbank rates, right? And then bank will add or less the margin in that. What the bank is going to do, they are going to keep the margin for themselves and then the balance rate will be applicable to you which will be called as merchant rates so this is how the things are going to work add or less margin means what sir margin is always the inflow of the bank now understand this from this particular and a simple rate let's say rupees per dollar interbank rate is 50 and 52 okay 50 and 52 so from the bank's angle if you want to buy this is the bank and this is you you want to buy one dollar so you are buying one dollar here that means you will be paying let's remove this huh. that means you will be paying 52 to the bank since you are receiving something you will be paying something else which is rupees which is rupees so 52 is your outflow am i right from the same uh, same thing from the bank's angle is opposite bank is selling the dollar to you and receiving 52 rupees am i right okay if you want to sell the dollar you will receive 50 rupees from the bank and opposite is the case bank will buy the dollar in this case from you and pay you rupees 50 so from the bank's angle 50 is an outflow and 52 is an inflow okay let me just remove this part so are you okay with this since bank is buying the dollar from you at uh, bid rate 50 will be the outflow to the bank because they are receiving the dollar so this is an outflow to the bank this is an inflow to the bank and now i just wanted to explain that cash outflow cash inflow but when the bank adjusts the margin 
understand that margin this is the inter bank margin not the forward margin inter bank margin right so that margin is the banks always inflow cash inflow cash inflow so let's say 2 rupees now you calculate the merchant rate it's very simple sir since 2 rupees will will always be the bank's inflow bank will always keep the margin and 50 is their outflow cash outflow and cash inflow plus and minus sign will get uh, will result into minus that means 50 minus 2 48 and see cash inflow cash inflow 52 plus 2 54 this is going to be the merchant rate so understand when to deduct the margin and when to add the margin it's very simple at the end of the day since bid rate is the bank's outflow because they are buying the dollar the currency the the value they are paying is the bid rate so that is an outflow margin as an inflow both of them are opposite it will be deducted at the end of the day interbank rate this is bid this is ask margin this is bid margin this is ask margin and merchant so understand that this is bid or we can say simply margin margin since bid is the cash outflow margin is the cash inflow to the bank it will always be deducted from the bid rate and it will always be added to the ask rate why because this is cash inflow this is cash inflow this is also cash inflow ask rate but the bid rate is cash outflow and that's why we are deducting it okay got it let's continue with the question now <coughs> okay so january's rates are given to you february's rates are given to you and the rates are in terms of symbol we will be using the symbol in this case or uh, yeah we can use the symbols or iso code whatever you, it whatever seems fit to you so this is basically rupees per dollar this is dollar per pound and this is singapore dollar per gbp let me just correct it write it properly this is rupees per us dollar this is us dollar per pound and this is singapore dollar per pound okay the bank wishes to retain an exchange margin of 0.125 exchange margin because these rates are not directly applicable to the merchant these are the interbank rate a rate between two banks what normally happens is whenever you go to the bank to ask some currency the bank will go to some other bank for buying that currency and then they will sell it to you for selling that currency the currency that you bought that they bought from you so if they are buying from you they will sell it in, in the market whatever they are going to keep is the exchange margin that's it required how much does the customer stand to gain or loss due to this delay it's very simple sir calculate the rupee and singapore dollar rate on january 28 adjust the margin in that calculate the rupee and singapore dollar rate on february 4 adjust the margin in that understand you are the importer you want to buy singapore dollars because on behalf of you the the bank is making the payment so practically it is you who are buying the singapore dollar from the bank you want to buy the singapore dollar bank wants to sell the singapore dollar if singapore dollar is the base currency ask rate will be applicable and in ask rate margin is adjusted added not deducted added so how are how, how should we go with this i will just take one date that is 31st jan and what will happen we need ask rate ask of if i am writing it in symbol it will be rupees per singapore dollar so rupees should be in the numerator ask of rupees per us dollar into ask of us dollar divided by singapore dollar that's it 
अच्छा देर आर थ्री करेंसीज इन दिस क्वेश्चन सो थ्री रेट्स विल बी देर सो रुपीज वॉज गिवन अगेंस्ट डॉलर एंड डॉलर इज गिवन अगेंस्ट पाउंड सो वी हैव टू इंट्रोड्यूस पाउंड एज वेल एंड अगेन आस्क ऑफ पाउंड डिवाइडेड बाय सिंगापुर डॉलर सी यू हैव टू कीप फ्रेमिंग द इक्वेशन इन सच अ मैनर दैट अल्टीमेट थिंग विच इज लेफ्ट इज रुपीज पर सिंगापुर डॉलर यू कैन क्लियरली सी दैट दिस यू एस डॉलर एंड यू एस डॉलर विल गेट कैंसल्ड बिकॉज बोथ ऑफ देम आर इन द न्यूमरेटर एंड डिनोमिनेटर दिस पाउंड एंड दिस पाउंड विल अगेन कैंसल्ड बिकॉज ऑफ द न्यूमरेटर एंड डिनोमिनेटर एंड वॉट्स लेफ्ट इज वॉट एक्जैक्टली यू नीड सो दिस इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व नाउ द वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू वेरी टू फाइंड आउट वेदर द कोटेशन आर गिवन एक्जैक्टली एज रिक्वायर्ड सो इट इज रुपीज पर यू एस डॉलर understand that it is also rupees per us dollar right the second thing that we want is dollar per pound and us dollar per pound see dollar per pound the third thing that we need is pound per singapore dollar and what has been given to us is singapore dollar per pound so the only requirement to reverse will be for this quote right so we can do it immediately that's not a big deal write down the first two parts will be same and the only thing that will change is this last one because it is not as per the requirement so one by bid ask will become bid and the rates will uh, the currencies will replace their position exchange their position singapore dollar by pound now we have the singapore dollar per pound and we will take the bid of that understand rupee per dollar dollar per pound ask rate so you will be taking ask rate ask rate and bid rate in the denominator okay 45.90 multiplied by 1.7850 in this manner 45.90 multiplied by 1.7850 multiplied by 1 divided by 3.1575 let's find out the answer it comes to 25.9482 still this is the interbank rate this is the interbank rate because the margin is yet to be added ask rate it is right so in ask we add the margin in bid we deduct the margin add 0.125% margin 0.125% of this 25.9482 into 0.125% that's 0.0324 only four decimals Twenty-five point nine four eight two plus point zero three two four. That comes to twenty-five point nine eight zero six. This is the rate which would have been applicable to buy every Singapore dollar to you. Bank will sell you the Singapore dollar at this rate, and they are going to buy it from the market at this rate. And the only profit to the bank is point zero three two four per dollar. okay so you could have purchased the singapore dollar on january 28th or january 28th or february 28th oh so i was wrong at saying that uh, uh, only 4 days of difference is there i think it's 29 30 31 7 days of the difference is there between these two so this would have been the rate now you have to do the same calculation for 4th of february the only thing that you have to do in this case is this rate this rate divided by this rate and then add 0.125% margin in that you will get the answer these two will be the rates you have to find out what would have been the outflow see the first rate is 25.9806 in this case it is 25.9806 you can see and on 4th of february it comes to 26.0719 let me just restart it again yeah on 4th of february it is coming to 26.0719 you can clearly see that one singapore dollar was costing less if it would have been completed on 28th of january so what is the difference 26.0719 minus 25.9806 
फोर्थ ऑफ द फेब्रुवरी इज रेट and the 28th rate this is the difference is the loss to you on every singapore dollar since you are buying you would want the rate to be lesser and instead it was higher on 4th of february when actually the bank remitted 25 lakhs so in total the loss to you is 228 250 rupees just because of the delay of the bank that's it and you can clearly see we are adding the margin because of the ask rate so in ask you will always add the margin in bid you will always deduct the margin i will just write it on the other side because ask is the inflow of the bank margin is also the inflow of the bank and bid is the outflow of the bank and margin is still the inflow of the bank do you get that okay sir let's move on to the next question now question number 16 so welcome to this question number 16 now this is going to be an interesting one not the difficult one couple of things to uh, which are important in this question we are going to discuss that have a look an importer customer see it's very important to understand the situation you are an importer in this question right so what might be the situation you want to buy the foreign currency or sell the foreign currency most of mostly the chances are you would want to buy the foreign currency from the bank so if you want to buy it bank will would want to sell it and if you are lucky and the currency base currency quoted in the question is the same as you want to buy then you can simply pick the ask rate okay let's see what has been given customer of your bank wishes to book forward contract trust me would you like to buy the forward or sell the forward contract by looking just at the importer i would want to buy the foreign currency in future okay at some future date one thing second thing if the base currency and the currency that i want to buy is same then i would want to buy the forward as well it is very important that the currency that we want to deal in is also the base currency of the forward contract so that the action by us matches with the action that we can take in the forward contract it might happen that the forward contract is given in some currency let's say the base currency of the forward contract is dollar and i want to sell uh, rupees at some future date i cannot say that i want to sell uh, forward contract now because the currencies in both uh, the situations are different the currencies has to be same okay with your bank september for sell to him sgd 5 lakhs to be delivered on 30th october for sell to him he said the bank that i want to enter into a forward contract with you under which i would buy you will sell to me to him means to me to the importer so you will sell na bank will sell that means banks ask rate my bid rate uh, sorry my <laughs> buying rate you, is your asking rate selling rate sgd 5 lakh to be delivered on 30th october okay the spot rate on 3rd september understand from 3rd september to 30th october you want the forward r usd this much and usd this much see so there is something missing in this which is inr inr per usd is that rate uh, you can get it from this particular point this might be the printing mistake or uh, might be the mistake in the question itself so usd inr and usd sgd that is singapore dollar is given to you and that is in the iso code iso code that means you will read it from like this right to left okay sir so the swap points are also given to you all the the entire table is filled with the swap point itself because the spot rates are already given here okay now understand that you are right now on 3rd of the september and the 3rd of the uh, and the september's swap points are given please one thing you should understand that if you are on september 3rd and they are saying spot slash september spot slash october november december january these are the forward points which has to be added in the spot rate so forward points has to be added in the spot rate also 
September is written here that doesn't mean this is 3rd September or today's date. We are on the 3rd September and we might buy the forward contract ending in the September at let's say for example 30th September, right? So even if we want to buy the 30th September, we will go for the September forward contract. So this is the 30th September forward contract. That is how we are going to read it. Okay, so all these are the forward contracts for the respective month. Okay, sir. Now tell me one thing, which swap point is applicable to you? We will ignore rest of the table. The moment we will stick to the swap points that is required to us. See right now, if we start from today, one month swap point is for September itself. So September and September, this is also going to explain the September. What you want is the October swap points that is going to be two months swap points because you want the delivery on 30th October. So October swap points or we can say two months from now will be useful to you. You can also debate on one thing that one month from 3rd September comes to 3rd of the October and we can go for this. No, sir. You have to be in parity with the rates given to you. One month doesn't mean 30 days here. One month means first month. See, this is not one. This is the first month. First means the September itself. Second month means the October, right? So these are the rates that you that you are going to use also. Swap points are given. So first thing that you need to notice is whether the swap points are in ascending order or descending order. This is in ascending order. This is in ascending order. Both of them will be added to the spot rates in order to calculate the forward rate. Let's first complete doing that and then we will see what should be done next. Spot plus swap and we will get to the forward rate. Again, there is one thing USD INR USD SGD. So USD INR, which rate is applicable to you bid or ask? It's very simple, sir. You take the both the, you take both the rates right now, calculate the forward rate in bid and ask form and then we'll decide. So it's 49.3700 and 3800. 1.7058 and 68. And the swap points for this period is 1100 and 1300. That means 1100. 1300 last four digits 96 97 that means point double zero nine six point double zero nine seven last digits always remember that so this is going to be 49.4800 and 49.5100 1.7154 1.7165 so we have reached to the forward rates okay and since we need the rate with INR Singapore dollar rate with INR calculate the rate to be quoted to the importer by assuming an exchange margin of 5 paisa understand it is given in terms of paisa it will only be applicable in a rate where INR is included the margin is not in terms of 5 cents you cannot apply it in the USD and SGD this is 5 paisa how are you going to apply a paisa in US dollar and SGD you cannot do that so the only rate left is the USD INR where you will apply the paisa margin now margin 5 paisa right 5 paisa so you can clearly see that 5 paisa 49.0500 is going to be uh, the answer it's not 49.5 means you will have to add 0 0.0500 or less 0 0.0500 in these rates. 
now you tell me where to add and where to deduct it's obviously simple to keep in mind that bank's selling rate is this that means bank will receive this bank will receive the margin as well both of them will be received so add it and in the bid rate deduct it because when bank will buy the dollar from you they are going to pay you this much and keep the margin with them so this margin should be inflow and this is outflow to the bank that's 49.4300 and 49.5600 so these are going to be the rates now what are we going to do we will assume that these are the merchant rates itself because no margin details are given for usd and sgd and only the details for usd inr was given uh, how come how come we know about uh, how come we got to know about this because five was the paisa in the question and paisa can only be applied where the inr is given so final rates are this that's it very simple now you don't have to worry about anything <sighs> okay so what is the exact rate that you need because we have to apply apply the cross rate na sgd inr pretty cool you want to buy the singapore dollar or sell the singapore dollar keep the keep your when you have the option na keep the requirement and the base currency same it will be very easy for you to do the calculation you want to buy the singapore dollar i am framing a, an equation where singapore dollar itself is the base currency i want to buy it bank will sell it banks ask rate is important okay so ask of sgd should be written first and then the other currency which is usd into ask of usd first inr should be written last because it is last in this equation as well and now find out whether the equations are given exactly according to your need sgd usd usd sgd opposite inverse do the reverse of that and while doing it you will convert the ask to bid you remember this into and the second rate is exactly usd inr so we'll keep the ask of that which is 49.5600 let's solve it 1 divided by bid 1.7154 uh, am i going to take this rates ask of this and bid of this 7154 49.56 49.5600 that's it end of the story 28.891 so you can see 28.8912 is our answer for 1 sgd and you can see it here as well the same is given but the way question is presented by the icci is little difficult for the students to understand see what we did in the very first we kept everything simple from the very beginning we used bid and ask of both the quotes okay what institute did is they knew that they knew that only ask of this and bid of this is required from the student point of view you don't know that we are only we are going to only use this much uh, these much of the rates you get you got to know about that at this stage okay so while solving this i think we should take all the figures okay you can you can clearly see it This is the INR USD INR calculation where they have used the ask rate forty nine point three eight, this one, and one point seven zero five eight. This is the bid rate that they have used one point seven zero five eight. This creates a confusion in the mind of the students that how why only ask and only bid is taken at this stage. You will get to know about it later at a later stage, na. So I think bid and ask should be taken in the beginning. go step by step and whenever the rate is required you can just pick it from uh, the given data so that's the major issue and instead of using the cross multiplication equation doing this will again confuse the students so the format can be changed you can use this format as well it's pretty simple uh, going with this format and you won't face any difficulty yeah one more thing which can be uh, 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 which can become a debate is that 5 paisa of margin can also be applied to the final rate of sgd and inr 
because INR is here, what we can do is ignore the exchange margin here. You will get the USD INR rate, USD SGD rate. Use those two rates means this one and this one and calculate the cross rate and then the final rate will be SGD INR. We can apply the PESA margin here at the same point. It automatically means the margin has been applied in both the cases because nowhere in the question it is very clear that USD SGD is a merchant rate. So both of them are uh, like very unclear or we can say there is no clarity that both of them are interbank rate or both of them are uh, merchant rate. Only thing that is given is exchange margin of PESA, 5 PESA can be applied. So obviously one thing is very clear that 5 PESA will be applied only where the quote consists of rupees. But it consists of rupees in this one also and SGD and INR also where to apply. So this is a debatable part. You cannot help it. That's the lack of the uh, lack of, lack in framing the question. Okay, come to question number 17. This is an interesting part now. Oh, ho, 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 ho. okay, before starting question number 17, since something related to discount and premium is being discussed in this question, we are going to discuss this concept and then we'll start with question number 17. So just give me a minute, uh, like five to 10 minutes and then I will explain everything and we'll be back to question number 17. <laughs> So let me frame a timeline here. And this is very easy. Let's say the spot rate for, I will take the simplest of the rate that is rupees per dollar and I will take it as 80 as the current market rate almost. So in 80 rupees, you will get $1, right? And if you have some exposure after three months, the forward rate will also become available to you. And let's say that is at 88. Cool. So can I calculate the premium in percentage forward premium in percentage? I can do that. The difference between these two are called as swap points. So eight, eight rupees is the swap point, but what is the difference in percentage? that is called as premium or discount. In this case, the forward is at premium. We can clearly see, but not the forward. It's the dollar who, which is at premium. So we are going to calculate something which is called as premium in dollar. What is the premium in dollar? It's very simple, sir. 88 minus 80. This is the difference divided by 80. When multiplied with 100, it comes to 10% and that too only for three months. If the three months discounting, just a second. If the three months uh, premium is 10%, the an annual premium will be 40%. But let's forget about the timing. We can easily convert that later on, whatever it is. This is the premium in dollar. We can say that the dollar is at premium by 10%. So. Can I say that if dollar is at premium, the other currency, which is rupees will be at discount, right, sir. If one currency is at premium, the other currency will be at discount for sure. Now, how to write the formulas here, like how to write the values here. It's not that easy. You cannot keep it. Uh, keep uh, keep the value same here because you have to calculate the discount in rupees. The rupee should be the base currency. Dollar was the base currency in this quote. And that's why I it was very easy for me to calculate it as 10%. But when I want to calculate the rupees, I will have to first find out whether the rupees is the base currency. No, sir. If it is not the base currency, I will have to convert the quote in base currency where the rupees base currency. So let's find out how to convert this quote where the base currency is rupees. Very simple, sir. You just do the inverse of it spot and forward. So if we do the inverse of it, it will be 1 by 80. And in case of forward, it will be 1 by 88. Am I right? So 1 by 80 comes to 0 0.0125 and 1 by 88 comes to 0 0.0114. Okay. Now let's do the calculations again. What was the formula in this case? What was the formula in this case? 88 was the forward rate minus 80 was the spot rate divided by 80 was the spot rate. 
right in this case this is spot and forward so let's use the same formula forward rate is 0 0.0114 0 0.0114 if we have to calculate the discount or premium in rupees rupee should be the base currency and here you can clearly see that we can write down this quote as dollar per rupee so rupee is the base currency here okay so 0 0.0114 forward minus spot divided by 0 0.0125 the base currency the spot rate right is the formula right so now calculate that comes to minus 8.8 percent and you can clearly see that one result out of this is the premium in the dollar is not equal to the discount in rupees the answers will vary sir and it's obvious see very very easy to understand when you go from 80 to 88 the base is this but when you come from 88 to 80 the base becomes this and that's why the percentage will change because the base is changing because the base is changing now you might you might not see it here i will explain it to you in a moment but this is one method of calculating the premium and discount if the answer is positive it is at premium if the answer is negative it is at discount so how to calculate the premium and discount sir what is the rule to it it's very simple whenever you have to calculate premium or discount first select the currency second make sure or is the currency base currency or we can say is it base currency or is it price currency if it's a base currency then use this formula forward minus spot divided by spot if it's a price currency you just convert the quote from direct to indirect and then what will happen automatically that currency will become the base currency so the purpose is that currency should be the base currency if it is base currency apply the formula if it is not the base currency that means it's a price currency reverse the quote and then apply the formula because at that time it will become the base currency so the same formula is applicable the only thing that you need to make sure is that the currency in which you are calculating the premium and discount is the base currency and use this formula but there is other way there is another way where you don't have to convert where you can use it directly i will just show you this is another way to calculate the premium or discount in any currency or 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 one more thing is left let me just complete it here itself the answer from this will be positive and negative okay if the answer is positive or if the answer is negative if the answer is positive it's premium if the answer is negative it is at discount simple now again the another method to calculate the premium and discount and you can use both the methods first step is same select currency and then find out whether it is base currency or price currency see same steps till this point and this will also be same if it is base currency f minus s divided by s and if it is price currency 
and you don't want to convert that into base currency simply s minus f divided by f you will get the same answer without any conversion i will tell you conversion will give you wrong like conversion will uh, end up what will happen is that there will be some mistakes in converting from direct to indirect and that in order to avoid that you can use this otherwise this is one of the best methods the only thing to remember is that the currency in which you want to calculate the premium or discount should be base if it is not base currency then convert it from direct to indirect and then again it will become base currency so ultimately the things will come to here and then only you are going to use the forward and spot formula and if the formula is this now if you can remember the two formulas there is no need for any kind of conversion if you want to calculate the premium or discount in base currency use this formula and if it is price currency use that formula let's find out 88 was the forward rate 80 was the spot rate and spot rate was 80 so the answer is 10% because we wanted to calculate it in do dollar so dollar was the base currency answer is positive it is at premium uh let's find out the other one spot rate is 80 forward rate is 88 divided by 88 8 divided by 88 now this will come to 9.09% i will show you the difference you might say that the answers are different it's not different it's just because of the rounding of error uh, let's come to this point and let's make some changes uh, 1 by 88 this rate let's make the changes i will show you 1 by 88 was coming to 0.0 One one three six one one three six three six three six three six. What I did uh, previously was I rounded it off to four one one four, and that made the entire difference. Instead of rounding off, if you keep this price point zero one one three six, the answer will be nine point zero nine percent. Point zero one one three six three six minus point zero one two five divided by one two five into hundred. That's nine point zero nine percent. So approximately, it is same. It's all because of the rounding of errors. That's what I tell. I I I told you, if you go and convert na the rate, there will be rounding of differences. My suggestion to you is, this is easy to understand. this particular part is easy to understand if you want to go with this method but it is going to give you rounding of error and the best thing is to use this if you can remember the formulas it's very easy sir uh first of all i will just remove this from here and i will complete this particular part and the answer was negative here see if in this case also if the answer is positive or negative there can be negative answer in this way in, in this part also so whatever it is if the answer is positive that currency will be at premium if the answer is negative that currency will be at discount so understand the only thing that you have to do in both i am just revising it and finishing it if you have to calculate premium or discount select the currency if it is base currency apply this formula otherwise convert that into base currency and apply this formula there will be some conversion or rounding of error so the answer will not match in this uh, part there will be some differences so you should not take that risk positive answer is there then it is premium negative then it is discount the only method that we are going to use in the coming questions is this one because this will not give you the rounding of errors select the currency if it is base or price decide it if it is base currency use the formula of forward minus spot by spot and if it is price currency use the formula of spot minus forward by forward so you just have to give a little extra put uh, extra efforts to understand the formula and then you will have the answers with without any rounding of errors so whatever is the answer if the answer is positive that currency is premium if the answer is negative that currency is at discount got it 
ओके लेट्स मूव हेड टू द क्वेश्चन नाउ क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवनटीन आई विल जस्ट टेक यू टू द चार्ट टू समराइज दिस आई थिंक वी हैव कंसिडर्ड I told you that we are going to discuss the cross rates and the premium and discount later on, and I think we have completed it now. So uh, you understood the concept of cross rate. A by C is equal to A by B into B by C. If bid is there, then everything will be bid, and if ask is there, everything will be ask. Also, premium and discount. If the premium or discount has to be calculated in base currency, F minus S by S, or you can use this formula also. F divided by S minus one. Simple. And if you have to calculate it in the price currency or counter currency. S minus F by F. So, please be careful while using the formula. The spot is the base. Uh, spot is the denominator in base currency, and forward is the denominator in counter currency. That's it. These are the two things. Most important one. And now we can easily solve lots of questions. Let's come to this point. Question number seventeen. Easiest one. See, these guys are exporters. Excel exporters are holding an export bill. That means the the you just start imagining at certain point in future they will receive the foreign currency and they would want to sell it. If foreign currency itself is the base currency, then bank will buy it and the bank's bid rate will be applicable only if the currency that we want to sell is the base currency. so export bill in united states dollar is 1 lakh due 60 days hence from today after 60 days we will receive 1 lakh dollars they are worried about the falling usd obviously they will be worried about the falling rate not the rising because they want to sell it they want to sell it at some future date na and if the rate goes down we will be receiving less amount Which will, which is currently at forty five point six zero per dollar. The concerned export consignment has been priced on an exchange rate of forty five point five zero. So whenever you do the shipping of those uh, goods, when you sold the goods to some party in America, you might have booked an export consignment, and when you have shipped those goods, the rate of the rate. Of exchange booked at that time was forty five point five zero. Market rate was forty five point six zero. For if you go to the bank, the rate was forty five point six zero. But the consignment rate at the time of shipping was exactly forty five point five zero. The firm's banker have quoted sixty days forward rate of forty five point two zero. Now, understand it is like this. Today the spot rate is forty five point six zero. the consignment rate is 45.50 and the forward rate is 45.20 and you are worried that this rate is going to fall like let's say if it goes to 44 by the time you receive dollars you will be receiving less of the dollars and you are worried about it it's better to do the hedging in forward contract in that case what is the rate of discount quoted by the bank bank has quoted forward rate na so the discount will be compared with the forward rate Forty five point six zero and forty five point two zero, six zero and two zero. What is the formula for that? Ha! Huh, one more thing. <clears throat> Whether it is discount or premium, you will get to know after the answer. If it if the answer is negative, it is discount. Again, second thing. If the question is not specific about which currency they are talking about, please. assume the base currency or the currency that you actually need so in that entire question it is very clear that the dollar is the product so dollar 40 this is rupees per dollar first of all dollar is the base currency and then they are asking you to calculate the premium and discount in that what is the formula for it f minus s by s because the dollar is the base currency the formula for base currency is f minus s divided by s So you used that formula. Forward rate was forty five point two zero. Let me calculate. Forward minus spot divided by spot. But that was only for sixty days. Whenever the discounts are quoted, it should be in a per annum basis. So what they did is this is only for sixty days. Let's convert it into three sixty five days, and this becomes the rate of discount. You can clearly see that the uh, answer is a negative. That means it is in discount. so you need not worry about whether it is at premium or discount you just put the formula put the formula you should know in which currency you are calculating the premium and discount if it is base currency this formula if it is 
काउंटर करेंसी और प्राइस करेंसी एस माइनस एफ डिवाइडेड बाय एफ वुड हैव बीन द फॉर्मूला ओके सर द प्रोबेबल लॉस ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग प्रॉफिट इफ द फॉरवर्ड सेल इज एग्रीड टू वॉट वुड हैपन Since the consignment was booked at forty five point five zero, that means in your accounting, the booking or the sales was booked at forty five point five zero. That means you are showing forty five lakh fifty thousand receivable from the other party. But the moment you will enter into a bank forward contract, you will fix yourself that you are only going to receive forty five lakh twenty thousand rupees, isn't it? This is the spot rate. this is the rate in your accounts and this is the actual forward rate so the very first question was a comparison between these two and the second question is they are asking the operating loss loss in our books will be compared with the rate at which we booked the contract and it was 45.50 our account statement had nothing to do with the spot rate we didn't do anything at the spot rate na so that's okay Forty five point five zero was receivable in our books, but the moment we entered into a contract with the bank, it was very clear that we are now going to receive only this much. So thirty paisa became the loss at the very moment on every dollar that becomes thirty thousand rupees probable loss of operating profit. So this was operating accounting. We can say operating profit, accounting profit. or uh, the accounting was done on the basis of 45.50 that's it okay let's move on to the next question this is an interesting one now question number 18 is based on a concept called as interest rate parity theory and there are lots of question on this concept so before starting question number 18 let's discuss this concept so what i am going to do is this is going to be a country okay this is one country this is another country let's say this is us and this is india and few things between these two countries are given to you the currency of this country is dollar the currency of this country is rupees let's say for example <coughs> the exchange rates between india and or rupees and dollar is given to you as 50 so that this is rupees per dollar okay and the forward rate is also 50 for the sake of understanding rate of interest if you deposit the money or borrow the money in uh, us is 8% and rate of deposit in india is let's say 12% obviously practically this is not possible 8% is a, a huge rate in as compared to the dollar currency but just for the sake of understanding easily now let's do one thing one one situation borrow money which currency we have to borrow but which currency borrow dollar 100 okay what is the second step convert dollar in rupees how much we will receive am i right 5000 so let's write down the conversion calculation it will be 100 dollars converted at spot rate of 50 will become 5000 what are we going to do with this rupees invest rupee in india okay cool also take forward now whether you will buy forward or sell forward please understand the underlying asset or the base currency in forward is dollar so whatever you want to do with the dollar after a year that's what you have to do with the forward i want to <clears throat> i will receive the rupees right after the investment becomes mature i will receive the rupees i will sell that rupees and buy the dollar if i want to buy the dollar i will buy the forward so instead of take forward i will write down buy forward that means i at some future date i am going to buy the base currency under this contract which is dollar okay so this is done at time t0 
let's say for the sake of understanding the time is one year and what will happen after one year the fifth step investment proceed how much 5000 invested at 12 percent will become 5600 am i right right sir six now you are going to buy dollar under forward am i right so what are you going to do 5600 will be sold at a forward rate of 50 rupees again the forward rate is 50 so how much dollars will you receive 112 dollars the dollars that you are going to receive is 112 right seven step you closed this position you promised to buy the dollar you are buying it you have received investment and uh, this position is also open borrowing of hundred dollars repayment of borrowings now understand you borrowed hundred dollar at eight percent so the repayment will be hundred and eight dollars you can clearly see that we have ended up with a gain which will be called as arbitrage gain without any loss we are gaining around four dollars in this case so can you see the arbitrage opportunity if we can do this transactions what what exactly i did i borrowed from us I borrowed $100 at 8% converted that at spot rate invested in India and bought the forward. What I did is investment proceed at the end of the one year investment proceed received by me was 5600 rupees with that amount I bought the dollar again under this buy forward contract and I made the repayment of the borrowing out of this $112 I received uh, I paid $108 and I'm still left with $4 arbitrage gain this will this particular opportunity will attract lots of arbitrages and what will happen the very first thing that will happen is lot of people will put a demand to borrow dollar that means <clears throat> first thing demand for dollar will increase resulting into demand for dollar will increase what will happen dollar will start appreciating it will start appreciating it will go up in the spot market because the demand is going up the value of dollar will also go up and the spot rate will also go up this 50 rupees okay now spot rate will also go up forward rate will also go up sir because in both the cases dollar is the underlying asset so forward spot rate will not go up for for the timing we can say that the spot rate of the future dates will go up now today the one once the rate is fixed it's fixed the rate will go up in the future that means the forward rate will go up this 50 rupees will go up let's start increasing the forward rate and uh, for the time being let's change it to from 50 to 54 what will happen if the rate goes to 54 rate goes to 54 let's imagine at this point if you do the same transaction 5600 divided by 54 it will give you 103.70 dollars 103.70 dollar inflow and 108 dollar outflow there will be a loss so do you think there will be a demand for dollar at 54 rupees of the forward rate no sir there will not be a demand for dollar at that rate because people are suffering losses now i will give you an uh, another type of equation or a situation we can say let's start with this time zero borrow rupees how much five thousand second 
द मोमेंट यू बोरोड इट एट ट्वेल्व परसेंट कन्वर्ट रुपीज इन डॉलर हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू कन्वर्ट इट फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज एट द स्पॉट रेट विल गिव यू हंड्रेड डॉलर राइट नाउ इन्वेस्ट डॉलर इन यू एस इन्वेस्ट रूपी इन इंडिया इन द सेम वे इन्वेस्ट डॉलर इन यू एस फोर्थ वॉट आर यू गोइंग टू डू एट द एंड ऑफ फर्स्ट ईयर द इन्वेस्टमेंट विल मेच्योर एट द एंड ऑफ वन ईयर यू विल ब्रिंग बैक द डॉलर इन इंडिया एंड यू विल सेल दैट डॉलर इन द फॉरवर्ड मार्केट मीन्स आफ्टर वन ईयर यू विल सेल दोज डॉलर सो यू वॉन्ट टू सेल द बेस करेंसी वंस यू डिसाइडेड दैट यू वॉन्ट टू सेल द बेस करेंसी देन सेल फॉरवर्ड टू डेट सेल्फ सो दीज आर द ट्रांजेक्शन दैट यू डिड एट टाइम जीरो नाउ वॉट विल हैपन आफ्टर वन ईयर just imagine investments will realize now you have made an investment in us investment proceeds how much 100 dollar invested at 8% will become 108 dollars okay then what are you going to do you are going to sell dollar because you have promised under the forward contract to sell them sell dollar under forward okay so let's sell it 108 dollar at 54 rupees so i'm taking this at 54 how much you are going to receive 5832 okay this is the rupees now what will happen you had some borrowings in the beginning in rupees you will have to make the payment of that repayment of borrowings how much it's very simple sir 5000 rupees borrowed at 12% you will have to pay 5600 rupees so particularly plus rupees 5832 minus rupees 5600 you can clearly see that we have an arbitrage gain in this case as well which is 232 rupees so what will happen in this case first what the demand for the demand for rupees will increase in this case many people like the people from india will start borrowing rupees americans will also come to india to borrow rupees so the demand for rupees will increase resulting into an increase in the value of rupees and decrease in the value of dollar demand for rupees will increase that means demand for dollar will decrease and the moment the demand for dollar decreases dollar will start depreciating just imagine it was appreciating in this case when the exchange rate forward rate was 50 it is depreciating in the case when the forward rate is 54 there was a high demand for dollar when the forward rate was 50 there is a high demand for rupees when the forward rate is 54 where do you think where do you think the equilibrium will achieve because if the forward rate for the dollar is 50 it is appreciating appreciating and appreciating if it is 54 it is depreciating and depreciating and depreciating there will be some point where the demand will stabilize the forward rates will stabilize the value of the dollar will stabilize yes there is a rate at which particular forward rate the equilibrium will be achieved it's very simple sir the moment there is no loss or profit no gain or loss either way that means if the arbitrage gain and loss is zero that is the perfect forward rate where the equilibrium will be achieved it means that the outflow and inflow just imagine this 
inflow and outflow should be same this inflow and outflow should be same the moment investment doing the invest like borrowing from one country and investing in other country will result into no profit or loss at that time the rates will stabilize otherwise one of the two currencies will start appreciating and the other one will start depreciating in this case what is happening happening dollar is appreciating rupees is depreciating in the other case what is happening rupee is appreciating and dollar is depreciating both of them has to stabilize and the stabilizing point will be zero profit or loss when the zero profit or loss will happen when there is no inflow uh, like the outflows and inflows will match it means that the forward rate that you have written here this is the main culprit just understand this should be something x let's say for example x which will match the figures right which will match with 108 so can't you just keep 108 dollar here x in place of 50 and 5600 it will give you the exact forward rate required where the demand will stabilize you can do it from this angle also just keep this point as x just keep this point as x and the result should be exactly equal to the repayment of borrowings that is 5600 so 5600 is equal to x multiplied by 108 dollar you keep the x here or here you will get the same value same value because it will get uh come like it will get uh what we can say set off both of them will set off with each other both of them will set off with each other and the balance will be zero and that is when the demand will stabilize that is when the people will realize that there is no point in borrowing money from one country and investing in other country let's start with that let's try doing it so if i keep 5600 divided by x is equal to 108 dollars right so x will be 5600 divided by 108 51.85 on the other side if i keep uh, 108 ah, it's both 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 are same i think yeah see 5600 5600 108 dollar 108 dollar so both will give you the same result you just have to keep that forward rate as x this is where the demand will stabilize from when it is 50 just understand when it is 50 it will start increasing when it is 54 it will start decreasing so it will start decreasing from 54 to this point and it will start increasing from 50 to this point and that is the point where the demand will stabilize this is called as theoretical forward rate this is called as a rate a forward rate where the interest rates of both the countries are at parity see by looking at the face the interest rates are differing in both the countries obviously by just looking at the rates most of the people will would want to invest in india because the rates are higher and uh, most of the people will start borrowing from america because the rates are lower that's what we, that's what we did in the beginning by just looking at by just looking at the interest rate i decided to borrow at a lower rate and invest at a higher rate one thing because there was no difference in the spot and forward rate so the benefit that these rates are giving to the people that you can borrow at a lower rate and invest at a higher rate should be offset by the difference between spot and forward the difference between spot and forward and that's when you will achieve equilibrium so one thing is common the difference between interest rate if the interest rate parity theory holds true if the interest rates of both the countries are at par if you want to prove that the interest rate of both the countries are at par even though they are looking like 8% and 12% then the difference between the spot and forward should be approximately equal to the difference between these two rates now let me just clear it once again <clears throat> the very first condition that you should remember
interest rate in country if the interest rate in country is high in any country currency of that country will start depreciating and you can clearly see that the advantage of giving high interest rate is being offset by the depreciation which is a bad news in the currency of that country so good news will be offset with the bad news good news is as compared to the other country the interest rates are high the bad news is as compared to the other country our currency is depreciating and opposite if the interest rates in a country are low the currency of that country will appreciate and that's what happened in our case you remember the dollar rate is lower than the indian interest rate since the dollar rate was lower it appreciated from 50 to 51.85 it will start appreciating the dollar will start appreciating appreciating from 50 to 51.85 and rupee will start depreciating from 50 to 51.85 this will hold true in the interest rate parity theory second thing <coughs> forward premium or discount in a currency will be approximately equal not exactly but approximately equal to interest rate differential i will just explain that to you since we have taken one year in this entire question we don't have to convert any rates and we can take it directly what is the difference between the interest rates you can clearly see 12 minus 8 is 4% am i right 4% is the difference in the interest rate and what is the uh, forward premium and discount it's very simple sir if we calculate it in dollars it will be forward minus spot divided by spot and according to our theory it was 51.85 minus 50 we will take the spot rate as 50 and the theoretical rate as 51.85 theoretical forward rate we have ignored the forward rate of 50 and forward rate of 54 because at that point both of them will not hold true we are writing this because of the interest because when uh, sorry only when the interest rate parity theory holds true so it is very important to write it first when irpt holds true that means the forward rate is according to this theory that is 51.85 then the interest rate in a country with high interest rate sorry if the high interest rates are there in a country the currency of that country will depreciate low interest rate country the currency of that country will appreciate second thing forward premium and discount will be approximately equal to the interest rate differential let's calculate that divided by 50 since it is entire one year we need not convert anything 51.85 minus 50 divided by 50 into 100 so you can clearly see that 3.7% is approximately equal to 4% this much of the difference will be there that's why i told you in the very beginning that this is approximate near about this will match so these two things you have to remember interest rate differential means the difference between the interest rate of the two countries if in this case the period would have been 6 month then we would have taken 4% instead of 8 and 6% instead of 12 also we would have calculated this for 6 month right so this is how the interest rate parity theory is now the question is how to calculate this theoretical forward rate is there any way yes sir there is a way and i told you the way will be in these rates itself the difference in the interest rate will be offset by the difference in the spot and forward and the formula will be like this
when it's a direct quote when it's indirect quote so there are different formulas just for clarification the formula is 1 plus rate of domestic country divided by 1 plus rate of foreign country is equal to forward rate divided by spot rate so 1 plus rate of domestic country what is our domestic country india 1.12 divided by 1.08 is equal to forward divided by 50 was the spot rate so if you solve it the answer is 51.85 exactly what you wanted on the other hand this might happen that sometimes everything is given perfectly but the rates are given indirectly instead of rupees per dollar if dollar per rupees is given then you will mess up if you will use this formula so direct quote meant i meant rupees per dollar which is was 50 but in case of indirect quote i am saying dollar per rupee 0.02 okay in this case if you are reversing this if you are reversing it the currencies you should reverse the formula as well see in this case the formula will be very simple 1 plus rate of foreign country divided by 1 plus rate of domestic country you can reverse the left hand side or the right hand side whichever suits you f divided by s so 1.08 divided by 1.12 is equal to f divided by 0.02 because the spot rate is indirectly given to you and now if you will solve it 1.08 divided 1.12 into 0.02 the answer will be forward rate of 0.0193 rounded off and this is sir this was rupees per dollar and this is dollar per rupees if you will inverse that divided by equal to it will be 51.85 rupees per dollar so the answers will be same answers will be same but the formulas has to be different you can inverse the left hand side or the right hand side in you can keep the left hand side like this and put s in the numerator like reverse the right hand side whatever it is you understand one thing i will give you the logic of doing this you don't have to memorize this thing 50 is rupees 50 is rupees so rupees should be multiplied with the indian rate na 12% is the indian rate so 12 into 50 you can see this is also indian when you do the cross multiplication this is also indian but if you keep 0.02 here 0.02 is the dollar sir 0.02 dollar into indian rate that will not give you anything dollar cannot be multiplied with the indian rate so the when you multiply the rate with the exchange rate with the uh, uh, interest rate with the exchange rate you just need to make sure that the currency of both the exchange rate and the interest rate should match 50 is also rupee 12% is also rupee rate in this case you can clearly see that 0.02 is the dollar and 8% is also the dollar so now it is matching and that's when the correct answer will be there so this is what you have to remember that's it <clears throat> so this is the formula to arrive at the equilibrium rate i told you why the forward rate will come to this point because of the demand and supply in the market if you keep if the actual forward rate in the market is different from this then the arbitrage opportunities will open up either by this transaction or by that transaction you will be able to make the profit this is only the half of interest rate parity theory the rest of the half is how to decide whether to borrow dollar or borrow rupees which currency to borrow and which one to invest for the arbitrage gain or loss we are going to discuss that after few questions because that is altogether a different part we will start the arbitrage here uh, let's see first of all what we are going to do we are going to compare the actual forward rate with theoretical forward rate and the two things will happen 
actual forward rate will be equal to theoretical forward rate and in that case no arbitrage exist right or we can say no arbitrage opportunity exist but if the actual forward rate is not matching with the theoretical forward rate then we will say arbitrage opportunity exists and from this point onwards there are two things that will happen actual forward rate will be greater than theoretical forward rate or actual forward rate will be less than theoretical forward rate because it is not equal then these are the only two things which can happen and from this point onwards which currency to borrow and which currency to invest we are going to decide but after few questions for now we are just going to practice finding out the theoretical forward rate okay let's come to question number 18 now <clears throat> so abc limited of uk has exported goods worth canadian dollar 5 lakh now understand your country is not india in this case your home country is uk and your foreign country is canada so what is your home currency sir great britain pound what is your foreign uh, this is home currency and the foreign currency is canadian dollar which is your foreign currency okay sir and we have exported from uk to canada we have exported goods worth 5 lakh dollar which we are going to receive after 6 months the exporter wants to hedge the receipt because the moment we will receive canadian dollar we would want to sell it in the bank sell it to the bank and we are afraid of falling rates for the canadian dollar we are afraid of falling rates okay we wants to we want to hedge the receipt of the forward market the following information is available you can clearly see the spot exchange rate is there and that rate is indirect quote because pound is the base currency in that and pound is our home country home currency whenever the quotations are foreign currency per unit of home currency is given at that time that rate is called as indirect quote the first thing that is given in this question is an indirect quote this is indirect quote okay interest rates in uk and interest rates in canada are given to you be very careful that the question asks only about the calculation for the 6 months the rates given will always be assumed as per annum and the applicable rate will be 6 and 7.5% for 6 months okay again uk is our home country so rate of domestic country will be 6 and the rate of foreign country will be 7.5 very careful the forward rates truly reflect the interest rate differential what does that mean it means that the forward rate actual forward rate can be calculated using the interest rate parity theory find out the gain or loss to uk exporter if Canadian dollar spot rates decline by two percent, gains by four percent, or remains unchanged over the next six months. Good. And they are not asking you if the re, uh, Canadian dollar, uh, sorry, if the uh, pound is declining, gaining, or remaining unchanged. It's the Canadian dollar that they are talking about, which is the foreign currency and the price currency in your court. price currency so you have to be very careful that whatever you are going to do it should be in the price currency the very first thing that we are going to do is we will calculate the forward rate using interest rate parity theory and i told you that this is indirect quote right so 1 plus rate of foreign country will be on the numerator in the indirect quote this one divided by 1 plus rate of domestic country should be equal to forward and spot so if you take the spot rate on this side spot rate can be multiplied so 2.5 will be multiplied with the forward rate which is 7.5% you can easily see that forward uh, foreign country interest rate is 
होम कंट्री इंटरेस्ट रेट इज सिक्स परसेंट एंड द फॉरवर्ड रेट कम्स टू कैनेडियन डॉलर टू पॉइंट फाइव थ्री फाइव पाउंड टू पॉइंट फाइव थ्री फाइव पाउंड ओके सो हैप्पी विद दिस थिंग नाउ लेट्स फाइंड आउट द गेन्स एंड लॉसेस टू द एक्सपोर्टर इफ द डॉलर स्पॉट रेट सी नाउ दे क्लियरली मैंशन दैट द कैनेडियन डॉलर इज डिक्लाइनिंग बाई टू परसेंट वी विल अप्लाय द फॉर्मुलाज बिकॉज देर इज अ स्लाइट मिस्टेक इन द इंस्टीट्यूट आंसर फर्स्ट थिंग इफ द कैनेडियन डॉलर डिक्लाइंस बाय टू परसेंट ओके इन एक्चुअल सो इट वॉज टू पॉइंट फाइव इयर वॉट विल बी द एक्चुअल स्पॉट रेट आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ्स इट्स वेरी सिंपल सर वेन एवर यू टॉक अबाउट प्रीमियम और डिस्काउंट बी वेरी केयरफुल वेर यू आर वेन यू आर टॉकिंग लाइक वेन यू आर कंसिडरिंग द बेस करेंसी और प्राइस करेंसी इन दिस केस कैनेडियन डॉलर इज द प्राइस करेंसी वेर द फॉर्मूला विल बी एस माइनस एफ डिवाइडेड बाय एफ नाउ इफ यू गो विद दिस वी कैन गेट दैट पॉइंट जीरो टू माइनस टू परसेंट ना टू परसेंट कैन बी रिटर्न इन डेसिमल्स एज पॉइंट जीरो टू माइनस माइनस पॉइंट जीरो टू और वी कैन सिंपली राइट इट लाइक दिस इन टू हंड्रेड सो इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई इन टू हंड्रेड इफ इट इज डिक्लाइनिंग आई विल राइट डाउन माइनस and then spot rate is 2.5 minus f divided by f into 100 so you can take 100 on that side first and f also on that side it will look like 0.02 f is equal to 2.5 minus f so this minus 1 f will go to that side which will get added and the balance will be 0.98 f is equal to 2.5 and the f will be 2.5 divided by 0.98 which will be 2.5510 so i can say that spot rate after 6 months okay in in this question you can replace the fo forward with spot rate after 6 months so spot of 6 months is equal to canadian dollar 2.5510 per pound okay now they, what they have calculated is 2.55 what we have calculated is 2.5510 you might say that this is just a rounding of error but this is not a rounding of error first of all they have straight away increased the 2.5 by 1.02 so it makes a lot of difference i will just show you in a moment see take higher values let's say we take uh 2 lakh 50000 and then divide it by 0.98 it will become 2 lakh 55102 and then take 2 lakh 50000 multiplied with 1.02 that will be 2 lakh 55000 this 102 is not because of rounding of difference sir you can clearly see there is no rounding of 0.9 it is the uh, like we have uh, reduced 2% from 100 na so this is not a rounding of difference okay we'll just move ahead okay now how to calculate that question is very clear that you have taken a forward rate that means you had already sold forward since you want to uh, no you have bought forward since you want to sell canadian dollar just understand there is a complication in this question and it is very important for you to understand this you wanted to sell the canadian dollar or like i will just go it from the very beginning 
in this case you are exporter here and you will receive canadian dollar at this date and you will go to the bank to sell canadian dollar but in the forward contract you can clearly see that it is 2.535 canadian dollar per pound so pound is the base currency if you sell forward that means you want to sell pound if you buy forward that means you want to buy pound so please let's convert our requirement into pound so we want to sell canadian dollar that means buy gbp after 6 month and if we want to buy gbp we will buy forward because gbp is the base currency in forward so you had entered into a contract where you bought the forward at 2.535 now just imagine what has happened in the very first case this is the situation the spot rate is 2.5 the forward rate is 2.535 okay and the first case when the spot rate on this date is 2.5510 you would have sold those canadian dollar at this rate now you will have to sell it at this rate what will be the total out inflow in both the cases <clears throat> receipt at forward rate and receipt at spot rate how to do that it's very simple uh, how much currency 5 lakh canadian dollar so 5 lakh divided by 2.535 why i am dividing i just told you 5 lakh is also canadian dollar 2.535 is also canadian dollar both the currencies are same and that's why we are dividing instead of multiplying so you will get pound 197239 and in this case 5 lakh divided by 2.5510 that's 196002 so you can clearly see there is a gain due to the fact that you have taken a forward rate this is the reality this is what would have happened if you would not have taken the forward contract since you have taken the forward contract you can see that you are receiving more that's around 1 2 3 Seven, twelve, twelve hundred and thirty-seven pound gain due to hedging. Because if you would not have taken uh, the forward contract, this would have been your cash inflow. But this is now your cash inflow. <sighs> gain due to hedging. Obviously, the uh, calculations will not match because of this two point five five thing. you can see that 197 to 239 is correct 197 to 239 is correct but this value will differ 2.551 we have taken and they have taken only 2.55 that's why there is a slight variation in the gain okay in this manner we are going to solve all the questions like all the other parts now the second part asks about gain of 4% that to in a price currency of canadian dollar so the formula will remain same sir this is going to remain same you are going to keep 4% here now what the institute has done is this they just did it like this instead of that what actually can be the answer i will just tell you the formula is s minus f divided by f is equal to 0.04 the spot rate is <coughs> mm, let me write it down at this space S minus F divided by F is equal to 0.04. So spot rate was 2.5 minus F divided by F is equal to 0.04. F will go to that side. 2.5 minus F is equal to 0.04. F and that's this minus one F will go to that side. 2.5 is equal to point. Sorry, 1.04. Both of them will get added. 1.04 F and F will be 2.5 divided by 1.04 so the actual rate will be 2.4038 instead of just writing 2.40 it should be 2.4038 so that's a mistake in the institute's answer nevertheless 
you should understand this you can make the correction if the question uh, is asked in the exam rest of the things are same so if you convert if you would not have hedged the receipt would have been 208333 and this will remain same now because you have taken a forward contract 197239 will remain same in everything in all the three parts that is the actual cash flow that you have received if you would not have taken the forward contract you would have sold those canadian dollar at 2.40 as per the institute's answer and you would have received 2,8333 pound now you lost it because you entered into a forward contract you are getting only 197239 the loss is this much if the spot rate remains unchanged still there is a loss because if it remains unchanged you can sell it at 2.50 still you would have received 2 lakh pound but now you have entered into a forward contract and you are receiving only 197239 you are still at loss if the spot rate does not change only if the rates are declining the canadian dollar is declining then only the taking forward contract is useful in this part otherwise in both the other cases it is not useful okay so these are the three different ways to find out okay what is the profit and gain or due to forward contract this is the profit or loss due to forward contract the same question can be asked where the question might say that you forgot to take the forward contract and now you have to sell the canadian dollar at the real spot rate now tell us the profit or loss if these three situations are there in that case you will say that this is a profit because you will receive whatever the dollar pound at the spot rate instead of forward rate so you forgot to receive this you forgot to enter into a co contract forward contract means you are not receiving 197239 now you are receiving 208 so this becomes your profit so this becomes your profit this becomes your profit and the previous one will become your loss it all depends upon from which angle the question is asking the question is asking from the forward rates angle then that was the profit and these two are losses if the question asks from the spot rates angle that if we convert the canadian dollar at spot rate then these two will be the profit do you understand that Okay let's move on to the next part this is an interesting this is an interesting and you are going to love it have a look on april 3 2003 april 2016 a bank quotes the following spot exchange rates see for dollar so the question the quotes are like this rupees per dollar okay and this is bid this is ask these are the spot rates 2 months swap point 3 months swap point you can clearly see that both the swap points are going up that means we are going to add in order to calculate the forward rate okay in a spot transaction delivery is made after 2 days so this has to be kept in mind we will see how to use that <sighs> assume the spot date as april 5 2006 see april 3 plus 2 days april 5 2006 so practically speaking whatever you want to do today it will be impacted on april 5 itself so you can do the calculation from april 5 itself instead of april 3 assume one swap point is equal to 0.0001 that means last digits will be used even if this particular information would not have been given na still we would have used uh, it at the end 0.70 last digits you are required to ascertain the swap points for 2 months and 15 days this is where the point uh, the thing is getting interesting the 2 months swap points are given to you the 3 months swap points are given to you how to calculate the swap points for 2 months and 15 days see and you won't realize this is easy so this is 2 months this is 3 months okay let's say the bid points are 70 and 160 sorry 70 for 2 months and 160 for 3 month 90 is the ask or i will just take the ask point later on so whatever the spot rates if you want to calculate the forward rate for 2 months you will add 70 points if you want to calculate the forward rate for 3 months you will add 160 points that means in a month you are increasing the swap points by 90 the difference between the 2 months swap point and the 3 months swap point is 90 so what will be the exact 15 days swap point 
45 half of that so what you are going to do is very simple interpolation if you are adding 90 points to 70 for 30 days just imagine how much point how many points you will add for exactly 15 days this is called as interpolation this will come to 45 so 70 plus 45 remember 45 will be the points for 15 days not for 2 months and 15 days for 2 months it's 70 for 15 days it will be 45 so that will go to 100 and 15 points for bid and similar you will do with the ask 160 and 186 sorry ask for 2 months is 90 and 186 that's around 96 half of that will be 48 so you will add 48 points in 90 that's 138 that's it the problem is solved this is your answer 115 and 138 interpolation is the solution if you have to calculate the broken period forward rate why we are calling it as a broken period because the exact 2 months 15 days forward rates are not quoted by the bank if the bank is quoting you 2 months swap points and the 3 months swap point you can calculate the broken period forward rate for a forward rate for any period or any date beyond this or uh, different from this so that will be called as a broken period forward rate see 115 and 138 the difference between these two is 90 the difference between these two is 96 since you have to calculate for exactly 50 days this is for 13 15 days exactly 15 days 45 what would have been the answer if you have to calculate for exactly 10 days not 30 so it's very simple sir 90 points for 30 days so how much for 10 it's very simple 30 points right and in case of 96 by 30 into 10 96 by 30 into 10 will give you 32 points. So in that case, 30 and 32 points would have been added. If the question asks you about two months and ten days, so it was easy because exactly half month was covered in this. But institute might make it difficult in the next exam if they ask you the same question. They will put something like 22 days, and that's very easy. don't get panic at that time it's very simple that for 30 days if they are putting 90 points how many points for 22 days so whatever it takes you just write it so 115 138 are clear to you okay determine the foreign exchange rate for june 20 june 20 2016 june 20 2016 from april 5 2016 how many days from april 5 to may 5 one month may 5 to june 5 two months from june 5 to 20th june two months 15 days exactly these points are required in the spot rate 66.2525 and 67 you are going to add these swap points that we have just calculated already they are in ascending order that means we have to add it in the spot rates and you will get the answer to the second part see last three digits last three digits and you will add it so these are the forward rates for two months understand two months 15 days question that's why the question clearly said that although today is 3rd april but all the delivery will take two days so consider the spot date as april 5 okay even if this information would not have given still you should remember that 3 plus 2 days 5 april should be taken and from that 5 april i will do all the calculation 5 april to 5 may 5th of may that's one month 5th of june second month and 20th june two and a half month exactly 200 2 months and 15 days so with the base the, the swap points that we calculated in the first part were used by us to calculate the forward rate in the second part spot plus those points compute the annual rate of premium just understand the question annual rate of premium or discount for dollar on inr on an average rate so that average is very important first of all we have to calculate the average rate and what is the average rate it's very simple sir <sighs> average of what This is the spot rate sixty six point two five two five. This is the forward rate that you just calculated sixty six point two six four zero. Do you get that? And this is the premium between these two. 
the premium between spot and forward is this so the premium between spot and forward is this this 115 and 138 points this is nothing but the swap points do you get that so total of a plus b now understand average of these two average rate means you should not take the spot nor the forward you take the average of spot and forward so this is the av uh, total of spot and forward divided by 2 will give you the average of spot and forward this is the premium this is the average this is the premium divided by average see this is the premium 115 points this is the average rate now this is not the spot rate this is not the forward rate i will tell you in order to calculate the premium we use this formula right f minus s by s that's what the question is asking you don't take s don't take f take average numerator is same 115 points and 138 points take average in the denominator that's what they did but those two uh, rates carry only 2.5 months question clearly said that you have to calculate the annual rate so this is the premium for 2.5 months how much will be the premium for 12 months multiplied by 100 this is the answer to you this is for bid you are going to do it for the ask as well so this is the ask rate of spot ask rate of forward do the total of these two and then average of this and then premium with this 138 point same formula s minus f or oh sorry f minus s by s same formula but instead of spot or forward they clearly said that put average of both spot and forward it's simple premium calculation of the premium if the question is specific about what to do just be that okay sir that was question number uh, 19 <laughs> this is very simple question for interest rate parity theory so i am putting it for you and uh, this one also for you very simple just put the formulas and you will get the answers yeah let's try solving question number 22 this is also easier one but uh, we'll do it anyhow 22 or 23 is same so one of the question will go to homework i think we can take 20 two both of them are almost same I'm just finding if <laughs> if a particular question is difficult then I will take that one. Let's take question number 22 23 will be your homework and that's easy. If the present interest rate for 6 months borrowing in India is 9% per annum see the borrowing is 6 months but 9% is per annum so it will be 4.5% in use in the formula and the corresponding rate in USA corresponding means exactly same rate is 2% in USA that means only 1% should be taken whenever you find such type of question you make sure you write down that 1% and 4.5% because when you start solving the question you forget that this was to be uh, uh, cut down to half and then you made a mistake and then you lose the marks and the dollar selling rate in india is 64.50 so this is a direct quote in this case interest rate for home country will be 4.5 and interest rate for foreign country will be 1% then <clears throat> so there are three things given to you exactly similar to the uh, example that i took when i explained the interest rate parity theory to you see they have given with the forward currency rate foreign currency rate home currency rate and spot rate and then now they are asking questions for this 50 and 54 let's do that <coughs> spot rate 64.50 rate of domestic country 4.5% rate of foreign country 1% okay will dollar be at a premium or discount in the indian forward market it will be at premium i will tell you why without calculating anything you have to answer it it's very simple sir according to interest rate parity theory the interest rate with a lower country okay country with a lower interest rate the currency of the country with a lower interest rate will appreciate and if it appreciate it will be at a premium if it depreciate it will be at a discount 
so that's what we have to write under the given circumstances the usd is expected to quote at a premium in india because of the interest rate is higher in india interest rate is higher in india and that's why what will happen rupee will depreciate the answer should have been different or we can say interest rate are lower in us and because of that dollar will appreciate simple so both has the same meaning second part find out the expected 6 months forward rate for dollar in india it's easy for us to calculate all the three things have been given what is the formula it's very simple sir 1 plus rate of domestic country 1 plus rate of foreign country is equal to forward by spot uh, spot rate this is a direct quote please ensure that this is a direct quote and the formula is also direct now you can put down the values 1.045 c 1.045 1.01 is equal to f1 divided by 64.50 you will get the forward rate this should be the actual forward rate if you want no arbitrage to happen if the actual forward rate is different than this arbitrage opportunities will exist okay so if you draw a line the spot rate comes to uh, 64.50 and the forward rate comes to 66.74 right this rate obviously will be quoted today now the question is asking you find out the rate of forward premium or discount see forward premium or discount will be approximately equal to interest rate differential and what is the difference in the interest rate 3 and a half percent for 6 month if you want to calculate it for the entire annum it will be 7% 9 minus 2 so if you calculate for 6 months it is 3 and a half percent and for 12 months it is 7% but that is approximate rate actual forward premium or discount can be calculated but you answer me one thing in which currency they are asking you to calculate the premium or discount base currency or price currency mm mm-hmm. nothing is given in the question but you can clearly see that the very first question was on dollar the second question was also on dollar so i am assuming the third question was also on dollar and the dollar is the base currency in this quotation you can see that dollar is the base currency so what is the formula for forward premium and discount in the base currency forward minus spot <coughs> on dollar which is base currency and the formula is forward minus spot by spot forward 66.74 minus spot divided by spot and this is for 6 months that's why you are converting it for per annum and this is per annum rate i told you the forward premium or discount per annum will be approximately equal to the interest rate differential since this is per annum we will take the per annum rate which was 9 minus 2 that is 7% don't you think 7% is approximately equal to 6.94 yes sir and so that's when it is matching i knew the answer from the very beginning that somewhere around 7% it is going to come if we are calculating the premium for per annum or for 6 months it is going to be 3 and a half percent easiest one okay sir question number 22 was easy question number 23 is similar you can take it for practice and if you are short of time you can leave it because of the same nature okay this is again an interesting question which you will be solving by yourself see you you uh got to know about the interest rate parity theory right there is one more theory based on this i will just write down the heading interest rate parity theory now there is something that you want to you would want to know purchasing power parity theory and all the concept of interest rate parity theory applies to the purchasing parity power parity theory except for the interest instead of the interest rate 
instead of the interest rate inflation rates are used in purchasing power parity theory so it all depends upon the direct and indirect quote if the quotation is direct quote and if it is indirect quote the formulas will be like this if it is direct quote 1 plus id instead of rd it is id that is inflation of domestic country divided by 1 plus if inflation of the foreign country is equal to forward by spot so you can calculate the forward rate based on the inflation as well but if the quotation is indirect 1 plus inflation of the foreign country will come to the numerator 1 plus inflation of domestic country in the denominator forward by spot that's it you get it rest of the things are same formulas are also same so if the question gives you a gives you the data for inflation you can use the purchasing power parity theory to calculate the forward rate now in this question you can clearly see the rate of inflation in usa is 3% per annum in india it is likely to be 6.5% you can see that the current spot rate is rupees per dollar so if it is rupees per dollar we will assume this as a direct quote and if we assume this as a direct quote rupees becomes the home currency dollar become the foreign currency so inflation of india that is id is 6.5% inflation of foreign country is 3% that to per annum now find out the rates of dollar in india after 1 year and 3 years from now it's very easy it's very easy it's very easy see 1 plus id 1 plus if is equal to f by s so if you want to just calculate for one year put down the values of per annum 1.065 divided by 1.03 is equal to forward divided by 43.40 so the answer will be 43.40 8.7 Let me just see this alternative answer go with this answer don't go with that answer I don't know why institute makes this creates this mess this is a proper and normal formula 44.87 and if you want to calculate it for 3 years it's very simple sir 1 plus c c c you don't have to follow anything else than this 1 plus id to the power 3 1 plus if to the power 3 is equal to f by s so if you are keeping it 3 in the <coughs> uh, power this spot rate should be of 0 point you can do one more thing 1 plus id to the power 2 1 plus id to the power 2 f divided by spot rate at the end of year 1 so basically there has to be a difference of uh the difference between this power and this uh, year should should bring you to the third year so i am already at the end of first year in this case and that's why i am just multiplying it by 2 like to uh, putting a power to 2 because after one year there are only two years to reach at the year end 3 if you can do it like this 1 plus id 1 plus if is equal to f divided by s2 because it is deemed that there is one in the power so after 2 year there is only one year required to reach at year 3 so you can use any of the formulas i would suggest to go with this one Bo all the uh, formulas will give you the same answer okay this is the case of one year and four year you are going to do it as homework and follow the alternative answer only Hmm this is going to be an interesting question now let's have a look this was asked in january 21 old syllabus